Right, Vallika. Yes, we are good to go. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Vallika, and I'm your host this evening. In order to celebrate International Mother Tongue Language, Mother Language Day, the Department of English, Karim City College, and the Society for Promotion of Art and Culture, SPARC, Karim City College, has jointly organized this session, wherein we shall listen to our chief guest, Abbasum Tahmina Shagufta Hussain, ma'am, express her views on language, evolution, progression, and challenges in a technology-driven world. I extend a hearty welcome to our chief guest, Tabasum Tahmina Shagufta Hussain, ma'am, our principal, Karim City College, Dr. Mohammad Riyaz, sir, teachers and students who have joined us this evening. Language plays an important role in a nation's development. It, it is a form of expression and reflective of one's own culture. It ensures cultural diversity and intercultural dialogue and thus strengthening cooperation. When a child starts to speak, the first word he or she utters is in his or her mother tongue. But unfortunately, as we grow up, we lose the track of it and slowly the language just disappears. Moving on, I would now like to invite our principal of Karim City College, Dr. Mohammad Riyad, sir, to kindly welcome our chief guest. Sir, over to you. Thank you, Walika. A warm good evening to everyone. I am proud and honored today to welcome Tabassum oh, Tahmina Swagufta Hussain among us. She is a well-known author, cultural activist, international fellow 2020, Bangla translator, and undefeatable cultural activist who needs no introduction to the world of letters. On behalf of the management of Karim City College, Jamshedpur, I express my deep gratitude to her for taking time out of her busy schedule to talk to our students and share her love of reading and writing with them. This is an e-initiative of the Department of English, Karim City College and Society for Promotion of Art and Culture, Karim City College, which intends to open the door of creativity for our students by introducing them to a, such a, an eminent speaker today on a occasion of International Mother Language Day. We are all eagerly looking forward to a wonderful lecture today. I congratulate Dr. Ibrahim and his whole team for his effort to in bring Tabassum Tahmina Shagufta Hussain to us and wish the department a wonderful event today. Her presence today amongst us is a matter of immense pride, not only for the Department of English and Spark, but also for Karim City College, for Jamshedpur and for Jharkhand as a whole. Her sharing of knowledge and wisdom with our student is highly fortunate on our part and shall help to inspire them a lot in the journey of a scholar and writer. I wish the Department of English and his spark very best for his deliberations and look forward to rich academic evening. Thank you. Thank you very much to all. Thank you, sir. Well, as, as just so mentioned, our chief guest Shagufta Ma'am needs no introduction, but I consider this my privilege and duty to introduce her to everyone listening this. Tabassum Tahmina Shagufta Hussain is from Dhaka, Bangladesh, while her hometown is Chittagong, Bangladesh. She has MA in English Literature and Masters of Professional Human Resource Management. She was the faculty 
of Dhaka City College, Daffodil International University, State University of Bangladesh, and also was a part-time faculty of University of Asia Pacific and Southeast University, Bangladesh. She has contributed to six anthologies and also to the London School of Economics Human Rights blog. She is the Bangla translator of ITHACA Foundation's initiative, Point Edition, Spain. She has also voiced herself as the columnist of the Bangladeshi print newspaper, Our Time and The Good Morning. She is also the International Fellow 2020 of International Human Rights Art Festival, New York, USA. Ma'am, it is an absolute honor to have you amongst us today. The idea of International Mother Language Day was an initiative of Bangladesh in the United Nations. And what a better way to celebrate this day by listening to our chief guest who has such deep roots in that country. Ma'am, the session is all yours. Over to you, ma'am. A very good evening to you all. Assalamu alaikum, adab, and namaskar. Namaste. First of all, I would like to thank the Department of English, Karim College, Principal Sir, Ibrahim Sir, for giving me this opportunity in this auspicious day, the Mother Language Day. Uh, I'm honored. I'm honored and humbly. I'm, my gratitude knows no bounds, as a matter of fact. I don't know how to express my feelings of gratitude towards you. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to pay my respect in this auspicious day to my mother language, Bangla, and all the indigenous languages in Bangladesh. At the same time, I would like to pay my profound respect to all the languages of India, including Indian, sorry, indigenous languages and the languages of the tribal people. So, I think Valika has said that uh, 21st February is very important in our history. And I would like to say that Bangladesh, in the history of Bangladesh, it is important. But at the same time, it is important in the history of the world. It is very important. And I would also like to say something to you. I'm, I have come here not as a guest. I have come here as a student. Honorable Principal Sir is here. And I would not, you know, I would not like to talk about theories or uh, what should I say? From textbooks, I would like to share some experiences and what I think from that perspective, what these things are. And I'm just a student here. Just you consider me as a student who is also going to present a presentation. You know, well, I'm nervous as a matter of fact. And you know what? I think this is very important when you are going to have a bond, when you are going to have a report, you need to have a trust. So I believe in honesty and I'm very much nervous. I'm very, very nervous because I'm going to present slides in front of so many students and I'm a student myself, Principal Sari is here. So what's going to happen? And I feel nervous. And I hope you will not be very much, you know, 
bored. So sometimes I'll have to, you know, say, looking at the uh, directly towards eye contact, and sometimes I'll have to read because I would like to use some quotes, and those are official quotes, and I like to be very much, you know, correct while quoting those uh, quotations. So why Mother Language Day is important in the history of Bangladesh and in the history of the world? In the history of the world. Because in the history of the world, no other students or any person or people sacrificed their life or lives for their mother tongue. In 1999, it was first announced by UNESCO to recognize International Mother Language Day, 21st February. And it was the initiative of Bangladesh because Bangladesh profound history is deeply related to the history of Bangladesh freedom struggle. I'm not a very, excuse me, I'm not a very tech savvy person. My daughter is helping, helping me with this one. So uh, you might find me very much, yeah, very much, uh, what should I say? nervous. I, that is also the reason for being nervous. I'm not a very tech person. I really don't know. So, say that in 2002. Okay. No, 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 it's not Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. I think I'm much more com comfortable in this way. So first of all, it was, you know, declared by UNESCO in 1999, and it was the initiative of Bangladesh. And later, in 2002, United Nations General assembly meeting, it was officially recognized. And what the resolution says, I quote, to promote the preservation and protection of all languages used by peoples of the world. So the idea of the Mother Language Day was, you know, Bangladesh initiative, as I have stated before. And how it happened the 21st February 1952. Why? How? So I have come here as a Bangladeshi from Bangladesh, and I, I hope that you would allow me to share a bit history. OK, let's not call it history. Let's, let's call it uh, a tale of two languages. OK? I hope that is OK with you not history, a tale of two languages. Let's go back, 1947, you know, uh, after the British left there were. I'll tell you when it's been shared. Excuse me. So in 1947, when British left, there were India and uh, Pakistan. Pakistan was divided into two parts, East Pakistan and West Pakistan. East Pakistan, majority of Pakistan's population lived in East Pakistan and they were Bangla speaking people. You have to uh, realize it. They were the majority of the people were Bangla speaking people. And it is a very emotional day for us 
Now, I let's plunge in. I will not bore you with the details. Let's go back to 1952. Before that, I would say one sentence from the beginning. The Pakistan government wanted Urdu to be the national language of the undivided Pakistan. They were protest. 27th January 1952, the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, Khaja Najimuddin, visited Dhaka. And he declared that, that Urdu would be the national language of Pakistan. People just couldn't take it. I mean, the people of East Pakistan couldn't take it. They felt humiliated. There were huge processions, there were large gatherings, there were rallies, there were, you know, people were protesting in many ways. Uh, they were writing in the walls, they were holding placards. And I would like to add one thing. In those days, they didn't have the human chain observing those days. Why I'm saying this? Because our behavior has changed and human behavior is very important in this issue, in this regard. So protests were going on, protests were going on. People just couldn't take it. They, they just, just wanted to show their anger. And the government didn't listen. The Pakistan government didn't listen. Uh, they, and the people felt humiliated. 21st February 1952, the students called nationwide strike. And the government on its part invoked section 144. On the morning, 21st February, the students gathered at the Faculty of Arts of Dhaka University, which is now Dhaka Medical College Hospital. And they decided that they are going to just defy 144, Section 144. And they start, move towards Provincial Assembly, where a Provincial Assembly was about to begin. The police wanted to stop them first by shooting blank shots. And then they just fired to disperse the public. And four people were murdered. You have to imagine that four people gave lives. It is also believed two other people gave lives. I'm going to tell their name. Rafiquddin Rafiq, Abdul Salam, Barkat. And I'm going to show you a uh, slide sharing. I need help now.
You see, this is the central Shahid Minar, Dhaka, Bangladesh. And why I'm showing this to you? You see in the middle, the structure. This is the abstraction, kind of, mother. Here, language has been personified as mother. And the two pillars on the right and on the left, they are four martyrs. This is very important. People in, on this day go to Shahid Minar. The official dress code is black, white, black or white, or black and white, or gray. We remember our martyrs and we pay our respects and cultural programs uh, many sessions and many kind of round table, uh, this type of or culture programs are organized. I just, I think I'm making a board. And now next slide, please. So you see the martyrs of 20th, 1st February, 1952. And these are our martyrs. So I'm going to make it a bit short, and I don't want to, the students are leaving. So I just don't want to make this session uh, boring. So let's uh, no, let's, let's stop the slideshow again. No, not now, this, not this. Just. Uh, Get, get out of this. Yeah, thank you. After they were martyred, the reaction was, you know, it was, I mean, a disaster. It was a disaster government couldn't control. I mean, 22nd February, government enforced curfew and army was deployed. I mean, in that day, army deployment, curfew was big thing, not like that we have no curfews during the pandemic, that sort of thing. It was a big issue over then. Uh, I can share uh, one experience. Uh, you know, my father was then 12 years old, and they heard this thing happened over there, curfew was there, and they were kind of, you know, shocked, or oh, curfew, that sort of thing. So this is one living memory I can share. Uh, from that time was my father, late father, from him. So that day, the students came to the streets and public joined them. That is very important part. I mean, public from all the sectors. And uh, Gaibi Janaja, I hope you understand the meaning of Gaibi Janaja. It is a funeral prayer uh, from the people for Muslim faiths where dead body is not there. It is called Gaibi Janaja, was held on the medical campus. On the night of 23rd February, where the four people, the martyrs were killed, students constructed a Shahid Minar and police dem demolished this Shahid Minar or Martyrs Memorial. In, in 1971, uh, after the independence of Bangladesh, <clears throat> the image I have just shown you before in Pitalia, it was built. And now we pay, go over there to pay our respect. So now I think, what do you think? What was it? Was it a clash between two languages? Was it a conflict between the two languages? Some people might think, would, would like to think that way, but I don't think that way. I think it was more than that. It was not a conflict. As I have uh, stated earlier, it is a tale of two languages, Urdu and Bangla, 
or you can say alphabetically Bangla and Urdu. It's not conflict. Bangladeshi people, Bengali people, they don't have any grudges against Urdu language. The only thing what happened, you know, did the government of that period, they showed their disrespect towards the mother tongue of East Pakistani people. We were Bengali speaking, Bangla speaking. They felt, they felt humiliated. They felt insulted. So the, there is also a psychological connection, and you have to understand that. And this is very important, as I have said. You won't find anywhere in history where people sacrifice their life for their mother tongue. So I can say that our human feelings are closely associated with language. What is language? May I ask anyone of you would like to answer? I'm learning. I'm a student over here. I just come over here to share. Anyone would like to say something about what is language? Okay, I can't. I think I can't. Okay. So, to some people, it is communication. So, Morse code is also, you know, communication. Is it language? What do you say? Anyone is writing something? I want to. Can I see the comments? Anyone? Can Morse code regarded? Can be regarded as language? Yeah. No, I, th I think chat is not allowed. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I just got I can't see myself. No, it's okay. This way. I think language is more than that. It is about your feelings, your emotions, how you express it. It is your heart words, right? Yes, expression. Thank you, Ujjal Malavika. Language is also a medium through which we communicate and express. Yes, that's why I was saying express. You, can you call a Morse code language? Anyone, please? So I'll carry on. So do have you ever asked yourself, how was the language in primitive age? Oh my god, I I won't dare to go there, Noam Chomsky theory or Grey Pape theory about the how language evolved over the years. I will just be very simple and what I know from my limited knowledge because I'm student of uh, Literature, not linguistics. Oh, I'm just very scared. Because it is uh, not a matter of history, how language evolved over the years. As a matter of fact, it is a kind of science because it requires uh, fossil records, archaeological evidences, and uh, Lang studies of language acquisition and comparison between human languages with the communication ex uh, system of existing animals and contemporary language diversity. Many argue that origin of language probably related closely to the origins of modern human behavior. And we know about hieroglyphics from Egypt, and I would like to show you some interesting, you know, hieroglyphics similar to Egyptian, but from 
another period, another civilization. So let's go back to slides. Just let's plunge in language progress, evolve and progression. Language evolution and progression. Point one, language is constantly adapting and changing to reflect our changing lives, experience, and cultures. Please uh, note these three things. Changing lives, experiences, and cultures. Secondly, language change enables us to accommodate new ideas, inventions, and technologies. Point three, it's not the words themselves which change. The way in which we use them can shift too. Next slide, please. Why does language change over time? It is always changing. It is always evolving. The English language has changed dramatically over the last millennium. You know, the English in Chaucer, sorry, the uh, English in the time of Chaucer, then in Shakespeare, then now the Romantics, and now contemporary are totally different. Like, we don't use thou, thy, these words anymore. They are just gone. It's changed. There are many different ways that this evolution happens. Here are some of the primary ways, and we will show it later. Next slide. Trade and migration. As culture interact, mix, and trade, language shifts to accommodate these changes. English, for example, often borrows from other languages. These are called loan words. In the slide, I have given example of avatar, tsunami, and suduki are good examples of borrow of more recent loan words. But from my experience, one of the word like adieu, A-D-I-E-U, it's a French word, but it is considered one of the sophisticated word in English literature if I may recall correctly. Next slide. Technology and new inventions. New words and phrases are also invented to describe things that didn't exist before. A few years ago, we weren't lured by clickbait and didn't worry about our carbon footprint. It is only recently that we have taken selfies or listed podcast. Sometimes these invented words are the fusion of two words that existed before. They are known as portmanteau words. For example, block comes from the combination of wave and log. Old words acquiring new meanings. You know, nice is given example here. You can uh, just, it's a word shift. It's, it has taken 700 years time, and it was the first, it was foolish, then it became dainty, then it became delightful, then it gave, now it is giving pleasure or satisfaction. Wow, what a shift. The internet has become responsible for a number of more recent word shifts like mouse, surf, and wave. Next slide. Language change today. Think about the English speaking world today. We are experiencing, oh dear God, exceptional amount of international trade, migration, and technological change just at the board, quickly changing around us. So, is the language we use just as the world is quickly changing around us? So, is the language we use? 
what do you think? Just as the world is quickly changing around us, so is the language is used. Anyone? Now, I would like to play a quiz with you, if you don't mind. I think it's getting bored, right? Let's play a quiz. The quiz is between me and student, OK? It's only for students. I'm a student here. Yeah. You, you can open your mics. Tsunami is a loan word from which language? Japanese, Korean, or Thai? Anyone? Are Japanese. Japanese. Oh, my dear. I thought it might be Korean. Thank you. Next slide. Email is a portmanteau of two words. Education and letter, electronic and mail, easy and mail. Electronic and mail. Oh, I'm confused. Can you confirm, anyone? Number two is the correct answer? No. Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you for enlightening me. Sometimes I get, you know, very. I'm not a tech savvy person, and you have to accept me as I am. And I'm very not formal over here. And I'm just here to present my slide in front of Principal Sir. So you have to help me here. And you see how I'm getting help from my daughter. And she's, <laughs> OK, let's, be, let's this uh, session be very informal. Question three, when a word is given a definition in a dictionary, its meaning is fixed and cannot change. Is it true or false? True. Really? Anyone? When a word is given a definition in a dictionary, its meaning is fixed and cannot change. False. Can false, ma'am. Yes, false. It is false. False, ma'am. Thank you. Question four. Which one from the options below can impact language change? Trade, migration, Nothing. geography, all of the above. All, all, of, all of the above. Anyone? All of the above. Anyone? Are you sure? All of the both? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yep. It is correct. Question five. Spanish, English, and Bengali are all part of one major language family. In the European, Sino-Tibetan, Afro-Asiatic. Ma'am, Indo-European. 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 Indo sure? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I need a more confirmation. I'm confused. Uh, Mike, please. Can anyone say Indo-European? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I'm doing it. Okay. Oh, my God. No, not this slide. No. Oh, my God. You have all gave correct answers. I was confused by myself. I was thinking something different. Question four and three was quite confusing. Thank you for helping me out. I think I have very cooperating students over here. Thank you, ma'am. Do you know? Oh, you are most welcome, and it's, it's a pleasure. So what about language and mythology? Are you interested in mythology, any one of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, have, ma have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed that uh, mythology, uh, they don't give credit to human beings? for inventing language. And it's been given credit to the deities. Have you noticed that? Yes, ma'am. Anyone, please? No. 
They speak of a divine language, oh, predating human language. Have you noticed? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mystical languages are often used uh, to communicate with animals and spirits, such as the birds. Why I am just mentioning this? Because it is relevant to our coming up slides. That's why I'm uh, referring to this particular issue. And uh, I just wanted to say that this thing, this subject matter was very important during the Renaissance period. And now we will just dive into the slides. This is very interesting and help me out and bear with me, please. Uh, your boring part will be over soon because I will be not giving lectures. I'll be sharing some stories from my life and how, you know, people see me. Not a tech savvy person. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is a disaster. Can you read this? Anatolian or just say Anatolian hieroglyphics. Can you read? Can you see that? It is hieroglyphics of modern Syria. And uh, it was used from the 14th to 17th century. It is compared to Egyptian uh, with hieroglyphics and some objects. But they're written decipher and stuff right, left. I won't plunge into it. I will just see it as a layman, as a common person. This is just look. Look at this image. Have you noticed something? Can you notice something similar? Just with the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah? Any similarities with the Egyptian hieroglyphics? Bird. Bird. May I ask your name? Ashish, ma'am. Hello, Ashish. Nice to meet you. I'm Shagunda. ma'am. Oh, dear God. I'm fascinated. Thank you so much. I feel so honored and I'm delighted. You have noticed it. There is another symbol from my perspective. I have, you know, noticed it in Anatolian hieroglyphics. It's a matter of interest. Yes. Anyone? There is another one. Mam and Egyptian eye. Yes. Yes. May I ask your name? Ma'am, myself, Raghubir. Raghupir, hello Raghupir, I'm Shagufta, it's nice meeting you, and I'm so much delighted. These two things I have noticed, but you can enlighten me, you have noticed uh, something similar with the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Ma'am, nature. Yes, may I ask your name? Raghupir Ashish and? Ujwala Malvika. Malvika. Thank you, Ashish Raghubir and Malvika. Thank you so much. Anyone, anything? Or we should? Snake. Hmm? Snake, snake. Yes. Snake, snake. It's a symbol of Medusa, yes. Yes, indeed. I told you I come over here to learn from you. I noticed only two or three. Now I'm learning from you. This is the way how it works from both sides. We all learn from each other. I used to learn from my students when I was a faculty. They taught me about, you know, the file binding and stuff. So apart I, from actually, saying, we are enjoying this session right now. I don't I'm think so. Fun. It's boring. When I no, 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 actually, we are enjoying. Seriously. Oh, it's very kind of you, and it's a common courtesy, I know. 
uh, don't think I'm a bias person, but students and the people who are from literature, they're very courteous. Uh, pardon me if there is anyone from other department. They are courteous as well. Next, me mark hieroglyphics. Mic mark hieroglyphics. It's in modern Canada. Hmm. No one knows when it started, but it's uh, stopped in uh, 19th century. And, you know, the most interesting part, it's a different kind of photographic style. And I would request you to see. Anything interesting you can you notice? Ma'am. It's made of letters that we use. Pardon? Metals. No, the, I mean, the sign. Letter. Letter, which letter? I, help me out. Ma'am, I can see H, A, J, I, O, as well. Yeah. H. You can see pi as well, right? Pi. Mathematics. The pi Mathematics. Pi, pi symbol. I mean, this is fascinating. Can you imagine nobody knew where it started and it's from North America and we are, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Anything? I see pie over here also. And you know, if we can see in a very cursive way, we can call it M by deducting the stars over there. There is the kind of. Next, I think we should go to the next slide. Mayan hieroglyphics. It's Mexico. Mexican. It is from Mexico. And early explorers thought that there were many similarities. Yes, there is one similarity with the Egyptian. Uh, both they used it for rituals and but these Mayan hieroglyphics, it is written, you know, the newspaper column style. Can you notice it? And I'm sorry, I cannot provide a good uh, image. Any answer? Can you, can you see the similarity of column in a newspaper? It's written left to right, then down. Left to right, then down. So it's not clear picture. I will go to next slide. These hieroglyphics used in Greek, you can, I, I don't need to tell you, this is from Greek and Aegean Islands. And it's from 1625 to 1500 BC. And it has not been deciphered yet. So let's not be experts. Just as a commoner, I would like to say something. Look at, can you see in the middle, the symbol? It is now in horizontal. If you think it in a vertical way, you will see the evil eye, which I have seen in my own eyes in Turkish houses. They call it Nazarband, the protection from evil. But you have to place the symbol from horizontal to vertical. Evila. Yes, Evila. Yeah. And in, in from Turkey to Iran and other places, Egypt as well. They call it Nazarband. Nazarband, and I think uh, there is a similarity with Nazar means sight in uh, language. 
in I think Urdu language in Bangla we also use nazar eyes nazar Bant means close. In Hindi, when you call a strike, you call it band, right? In Bangla, we say it bondho, but the meaning is same, it's close. So someone is trying to say something, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, ma'am, this is me, Ashish. Yeah, Ashish, please. Ma'am, if we see the, uh, this uh, picture horizontally, we found, uh, we, we can see that there's a cat as well. Cat and also the uh, cat, apart from that, owl. Yeah, yeah. Owl or cat, I can see cat. that there are some. Okay. Old Mac. It is in modern Mexico, Gulf Coast. And uh, this is, I think, uh, just like, you know, Egyptian and Olmec people use their script for religious purpose only. And it's very difficult. And I'm sorry I couldn't provide. I've tried my best, but it's not very much possible to get in. So our presentation is over. Now you will have to bear with me. No more history, no more slides, just, you know, sharing experience from my life and how I feel that language might be facing threats. A personal experience, would you like to hear? Let's just, let's call it off. The presentation is over and everything is over. Now I can speak freely. So would you mind if I share some experience of mine from real life and why I think that this can be threats? OK, I think everyone is fine with that. I think it was about six and seven months ago. My daughter, my only one daughter, she was doing her maths. So. I was reading or writing, I can't remember. And her WhatsApp, it gave sound. And she said, mom, could you check it for me? And sure, why not? OK. I read, read it out loud for her. And she said, OK. And say, do you want to you know, type reply for you? And she said, yes. So what's your reply? And she said, IDK. And I said, what? What is IDK? And I was just like, huh? And she was just like, huh? I mean, she was, her eyes gave me such an expression. I mean, it needed no language. She was thinking, oh my God, my mother is such a naive person. She doesn't know what IDK is. Oh dear God. And I was, what is IDK? What is, is some kind of, you know, I was trying to, you know, break the code. But it was not hilarious. It was shocking for her. And it was something challenging for me. I was just, you know, I was just, Oh my God, oh my God, what is this? I, I was trying to break the code. I was trying to break the code. I was trying to break the code. And okay, finally I learned. Hi, DK means I don't know. And can you believe these days I'm also writing IDK in WhatsApp messages. So my daughter's behavior or behavior pattern is influencing mine. So their languages are becoming short. This is how, you know, human behavior influence. That's why I uh, requested you in the slides to uh, understand the culture, the behavior, and this thing and stuff, and why it is related. So the culture is very much important, but at the same time, human behavior is very much important. Her influence 
has changed my behavior, writing behavior, writing pattern. So online classes are increasing. This is my personal experience. That's why it's, it's not a threat. It's what I'm trying to say that human behavior changes because these days I do also write IDK, which means I don't know. Laugh out loud, LOL, I, I knew, I won't deny it, but I, I didn't know about IDK. And let's be very honest and clear about it. Before the pandemic, uh, online classes were popular in the Western countries, and now it has become, you know, popular in this part of the world as well. Why? Because of the flexibility and because of the cost effectiveness, I guess. And in this respect, I would like to, you know, refer Indian linguistic G. N. Devi, and I quote. Having technology might lead to less communication. Because he thinks the technology inhibits communication and alters the language and culture of a group. I mean, it's true. It's true. In some way, it's true. I can give you an example. I mean, there are a lot of things, just the way I shared. I'm my generation, my daughter's generation. I mean, we are not used to this sort of language. We'd rather, you know, prefer to have, I don't know, I'm sorry, that sort of thing. And they say, why writing so long language? Just write it down. I don't know, that's enough. Indigenous languages are facing threats. I hope I don't want to go very deep into this, uh, but you all know this is true. But I can share one experience from Bangladesh. I know uh, tribal, you know, community, but I won't mention the name of that particular community out of respect. Uh, my friends belong to that community, some of my friends. Their parents used to speak their language, but now their children, they are not speaking the, that, that tribal com uh, community's language because parents are speaking in Bangla or English and internet language or whatever, children, they are not speaking. So this is how indigenous languages are facing threats. And when I have referred to this threat, I have mentioned example from my country, which is Bangladesh. Have you noticed one thing? Verbal communication is decreasing. I think some might agree with me. People have noticed that children, yo, thank you so much, Manish. Children yes, standing next to each other and texting each other. Is it? Yeah. Is it normal? Is it normal? Do you think is it normal? I don't think so. It is normal. Maybe today it's some of the children, 10 or uh, 15 children, next day. The others will think, okay, they're doing this, we'll have to do it. Maybe this is the new smartness. Let's do it. So this is how human interaction in coming up days will be decreasing. I mean, this is this is really alarming, I think. You need to you need to talk, you need to interact in a written way or in a verbal way, you need to talk to each other. Now I will just mention one thing, which is digital divide. And you would ask, oh, how does it fit with the language? Absolutely, it does fit with the language. Because in urban areas, we have big schools with internet facilities. In Bangladesh we have, but there are some rural schools. They cannot afford internet facilities to that extent, you know, with mobile, mobile data and that stuff and Wi-Fi. So 
they are getting connection lost with whom their teachers they are forgetting how to address their teachers respecting their teachers okay i can tell you it is also happening in urban areas as well uh, my parents taught me this is again i am telling you that i'm telling i'm here to uh, share my experiences from my life my parents taught me whenever you see a teacher whether he or she is taking your class or not if a teacher is passing by in the corridor school college university it doesn't matter salam or adab or namaskar you have to do it i taught my daughter the same thing she was okay when online classes started she was continuing it but these days i don't see her doing it regularly so what do you think there are some thank you manish thank you very much there are some i'm not a conservative person trust me when i tell you this but i like to respect my culture tradition with the social norm which we have been you know inherited from our parents from our forefathers there is certain kind of courtesy we need to maintain you know i mean i cannot blame my daughter because she she says the others are not doing this and sometimes they are turning off the camera it doesn't apply for you you don't have to turn the camera on i mean she's a kid she's a teenage she need to respect the teachers ah, she is not talking they are turning it off they feel sleepy and this is they don't talk they just type and this is this is very alarming trust me when i say this as a parent and as an observer next imaging emoji sorry i told you i'm not a tech savvy person i don't spend much time in facebook so i don't know those things emoji use is increasing that is why our language is in written form you know what we are losing use of it how i can give you an example i don't post my daughter's picture in facebook because of certain reasons but i do have relatives and friends circles uh from my maternal aunts my senior generation when they see they write mashallah be blessed stay blessed my cousins they write oh she's looking beautiful she's looking great she has grown up their children they just press the love or hug or care i think i am not sure or wow that sort of sign so what is happening what is happening in written form language we are becoming you know sidelined pressing emojis even in gmail in reply you have you know sing language rohit uh, sign language sorry i, I can't sign okay sign language i think it is so in uh, gmail you can find there are ready replies got it thank you call you back write you back but i would like to write that way where are those beautiful words sincerely yours respectfully yours gratefully yours ah, as always i look forward to hearing from you in enthusiasm with anticipation where are where are these beautiful words are going okay i know time is you know consuming time you don't have much time you want to spend time in a laptop or mobile it's okay with me but at least right dear sir madam thank you for this email uh, 
Just don't leak. Okay, thanks. Got it. This doesn't sound right. Maybe I'm a conservative person or from another generation. Maybe this is my, you know, what should I say? Okay, I understand. I think I'm already labeled as, you know, uh, back generation, but I'm not. I'm not against technology. I'm not against technology. Trust me when I say this. I'm not against it. I, I do like to embrace technology. But we need to have some sort of balance. When our verbal language we are using, written form, or concern, it has to. Otherwise, we'll be losing this stuff. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention one thing, and my just daughter just give me the sign language like this. OK, I forgot to mention this. From Harry Potter, many new words have been added to the dictionary. It's amazing, right? And I, I, I like it. It's fine. It's fine with me. So where I was, I was thinking there should be a balance. Embrace technology, but at the same time, you need to talk. You need to write. You, you cannot get away from the beautiful ornamental English. My goodness, I still remember there was a word uh, which I used to word uh, 1995, bower. It's ancient English, and it means garden, and I used to use the word bower. Now I use the word garden. Why? Because most of the people, and I had Urdu speaking friends in my hometown, Chittagong, and I picked up Urdu. But for 20 years after I moved to Dhaka, for 20 years and two months, I haven't spoken Urdu with anyone. So I've lost it, completely lost it. My great grandfather, he was, you know, Farsi speaking, Farsi, I think you know. He didn't, I think the English is Persian, but it, in Bangla we call it Farsi. Urdu, Urdu is originated. He didn't know Urdu, he was Farsi speaking. And read in writing as well. I have never seen my father. I have never seen my father, you know, speaking Farsi. So generation gap, migration, you know, this sort of thing. These things happen, do happen. These things do happen. And this is how we, you know, our language evolve. This is how these, all these things I'm trying to say from personal experience to make a connection that what I have presented in the, or tried to present in the uh, slideshow. So let's, I think I have said enough, but again, I cannot stop myself. How it would be if I were to there at Korim College at this very evening, in person, talking with you, how would I say hello? How would you reply? What if, just what if, what if I was there and you were there, where in person we were talking to each other? You know, maybe the eternal question of Coleridge's what if is, I mean, I'm captivated, captivated by it. And I just wonder most of the times, what if? So I hope you will excuse me for thinking that way. And I have one thing. You are, I think you know about metaverse. Have you ever asked yourself In the metaverse world, how our language will evolve? What form will it take? Will metaverse pose a threat to our language development? Thank you.
Thank you, Manish. Thank you very much. You have been very kind to me, and I'm very much grateful. Well, I think we are in the same path, I guess. So it's communicating is very important. Oh, thankfully yours and sincerely yours, Manish. So communication in person is very important. We can talk, you know, we can talk. Written form, sometimes try not to use emoji. But you know, sometimes now I have started using emoji because I don't want to spend much time in FB. I, I, I'm not an FB addict, so I don't like to spend my time over there. So I have started using F, uh, emoji over there. So my behavior is changing. Just remember the quote, G and Devi, alters the communication and a particular group language. We might be facing a possible threat of new normal, which is 2025. Have you ever thought of it? What would be in future? Anyone, any thoughts about metaverse and new normal 2022, anyone? Two thousand twenty five would be much, much, much more technology tools dependent. I think you will give it a thought. What would be it like? What kind of language evolving are we going to face? Also, maybe we look at each other and understand the minds. Uh, Valika, well, yes, Valika, maybe, but uh, no communication in which world 2025 or metaverse? Valika, you are referring to which I have mentioned uh, metaverse, then uh, nor new normal 2025, technology dependent. Both, I guess, okay. Now, fourth industrial revelation. What are we going to face? Anyone, any idea? Anyone? Okay. So I think that was it all. I just tried my best because I told you I'm from, not from linguistic departments. I tried my best and you know, I'm not a tech savvy person. I'm dependent on someone to help me out with these things, stuff. So I hope I have not disappointed principal sir over here. And when Ibrahim sir will hear about it, I don't know. Oh, I'm really scared now. Oops. So first of all, uh, just it has been a wonderful experience to cooperating with you. But uh, Valika, may I request you one thing? Would you be kind enough, uh, pardon me for uh, interrupting a request to the host. Would you, my, just before the session, my cell crashed and I am unable to get any messages from anyone. Uh, would you be kind enough to share uh, the poster for today's event? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Uh, how can it be done? Uh, so you just type her and the poster she can send. At, you can uh, write her uh, in personally. Can you write her personal message and give her the email while the session is not in Google? Not in Google Maps. Uh, can you give uh, uh, email? I can give it in the chat, not the
Can I get it right now, please? Uh, uh, it's a gift uh, for my daughter. Yes, ma'am. I'll uh, I shall mail this uh, uh, this email uh, tts dot hussein at gmail dot com. Uh, we shall yes. mail it. Me, yeah, shall yeah. It. Okay. So, so I was going to wrap up, and I just want to say this is very important thing. Uh, I I want to ask myself a hypo hypothetical question, and I was just wondering. Are we heading towards Nietzsche's the last man who will be replaced by Ubersmen or Superman? What it would be like if it really happens? What would be the form of language in the world of Ubersmen as predicted by Friedrich Nietzsche? That's all I want to say. And I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Ibrahim sir, principal sir. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to say something. And I told you, you have to excuse me because this is not my arena of expertise and I'm from Bangladesh. And I just say that I respect your languages and you all should respect all other languages. This is how we should respect each other. One can have respect from another one if you respect another one. You need to try. You need to play your part. You need to respect. Don't be disrespectful to anyone's language or culture. This is very important. And we are from, from English department. We are not taught that way. We are, we are very different from other, you know, subjects. Don't, uh, I don't mean any uh, disrespect to the other departments. So be respectful to all the languages, no matter what. Even indigenous people or lower caste people, or uh, sorry, excuse me, upper caste, uh, sorry, I think in India it is called scheduled caste, I think. And uh, tribal people, be respectful. You have to be respectful to other cultures and languages. This is very important. This is how we can establish a beautiful world uh, where there will be, we all can be global citizen and we can live with peace and harmony. That is all I want to say. And maybe one day uh, I will visit you and it would be my pleasure to meet you in person. I look forward to it. Let's leave all the negative vibes. And if I have offended you in any way, please accept my sincere apologies and regrets. Thank you very much. I wish you a very good night. Thank you. Adieu. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was a beautiful session, the real life experiences that you shared. And uh, you know, the thing about the digital divide that you said that using emojis, we are somewhere losing the beauty of the words that we used to use. And how you know, the you gave the example of IDK, uh, you know, signifying that how language is evolving so fast in today's world. Uh, I think everyone present in this meeting has uh, somewhere uh, connected to what you said. So thank you so much for uh, this great session. We had a great time. Uh, I, uh, Basudara ma'am is there. Uh, ma'am, if you want to say, uh, say anything, express your views regarding this session. Ma'am, I'm audible. Are you? Vallika, you can continue. Basu ma'am is not here, I guess. Uh, Vallika, may I request you to send the poster uh, to the email now? My daughter, she has been helping me and... Uh, yes, ma'am, it is being done. It is uh, Raghubi. 
Are you there, Raghubir? Yes, I am sending it right now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, I would like to request Raghubir to express his vote of thanks. Raghubir, over to you. A very good evening to one and all present here. I, Raghubi Tudu, I am privileged to propose a vote of thanks with deep sense of appreciation. I would like to thank our chief guest, Tabashum Tahmina Shah Gupta Hussain, ma'am, for this intellectual discourse and make this worthwhile. And I am grateful to our principal, Dr. Riyas sir, and HOT Professor Yahya Ibrahim sir for conducting such an intellectual session. I hope we have learned something from this. Over to you, Vallika. Thank you, Raghubi. Uh, ma'am, Basu ma'am, would you like to say something? Yes, it was a wonderful, wonderful session, uh, Shagufta ma'am. And uh, as you can see, you know, our students have been enjoying it. They have learned a lot from it. And most importantly today, it is important, you know, I, I think that that last line is a very powerful takeaway that unless you give respect, you know, you're not going to receive it. So it is important that we encourage multilingualism. We encourage this sense of respect for other languages. Uh, Shagufta Ma'am has described how history, culture, uh, you know, everything is embedded in a language and to keep a language alive is to keep, uh, you know, a way of life alive. So um, on this note, Thank you very much for a very, very enlightening discourse. And uh, we are very, very honored to have had you on this special day, ma'am. Thank you so much. Dhonobad, Bangla, Shukriya, Urdu, and also in Hindi, I think. Thank you in English. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So we'll stop the recording here. Thank you, students, for joining us on this wonderful session. And I hope that Raghubir and Vallika, you'll manage to send uh, the post uh, to ma'am. And ma'am, this uh, recording will very shortly be up on YouTube.